As you know, Nintendo Switch Sports has been out for quite a while, a few months actually, and uh, well, I'm getting a little, I'm getting a little sick of it. I decided what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at many sports games on the Nintendo Switch and see if they tickle my fancy any more than the other games that are on Nintendo Switch already. So let's look at some Switch games that may have or haven't done that well on the Nintendo Switch and uh, our sports games. I decided I'm going to look for games that have multiple sports in them, like Nintendo Switch Sports. Nintendo Switch Sports has tennis, chambara, badminton other sports. But I want to find other games that have sports in it as well. You know, the, the value pack sports games. So it's a beautiful day out, sun is shining and the birds are chirping. It's the perfect day to play sports outside. So I'm going to stay inside and play some sports video games. But first I gotta find some Switch games to replace my virtual sports addiction. Good thing I found this game under the sink. Here we have Instant Sports, which is weird because I'm still waiting for the game to load. Instant Sports has many versions. There's Instant Sports, Instant Sports Paradise, Instant Sports Tennis, Instant Sports Summer Games, Instant Sports Winter Games, Instant Sports All-Stars, and of course, the game we have here, which is Instant Sports Plus, which is the original Instant Sports, but with more pluses. So we start the game and find that, oh, what a wide variety of characters to play. And we go to Paradise Island. Wait, Paradise Island? There's a game called Instant Sports Paradise already. Why is this game on a Paradise Island? Did they print the wrong game on the cartridge? Even the text doesn't fit the bubbles. But good thing we have many sports to play. Let's start with the sport of ice cream. Very fun, but should be a Mario Party game. Now we have Walk. Once again, would be good for Mario Party. So let's try Wakeboard. By far the best one so far, but looks like trash and nothing special. Oh, and Mario Party. Wingsuit is also a game. There's a plethora of games, but in this, instant sports game, they all feel half-baked. But there are some things that are decent, like the balloon airplane game. In this mini game, you pop as many balloons as you can, while other people pop them as well. Once you pop a balloon, it comes back as your color, and other players can pop it. It's a neat idea, actually. But like table tennis, have you heard of Mario Party? And the bowling game looks like it was ordered off of Wish. And this game came out two weeks after Nintendo Switch Sports came out. So that's pretty bold of this company. Overall, the crappy menu graphics and cheap mini games for a beefy price makes me happy I just unbuckled my seatbelt. And now that we're done being physically instant sported, it's time to look at two sporting gems. And those are the two Olympic games on Switch. We got Mario and Sonic at the 2020 Olympic Games and Olympic Games Tokyo 2020, the official video game. I can't help but think these will be a little similar because they're both published by Sega. Made by different teams, but both made by Sega. So they'll both suck. We'll start with Mario and Sonic. And right away I'm reminded why I don't put orange juice in my cereal. I remember loving every installment of the Mario and Sonic franchise as a kid, but I'm not a kid anymore. So I'm challenging myself to play every game with the Joy-Con motion controls because that's how I feel they should be played. And I will say motion controls definitely aren't incredibly responsive, especially during the 100 meter run. But hey, I could just be swinging the controllers wrong. And there's also a story mode, which is as good as you'd expect from a sports game like this. Pretty much Bowser and Eggman make this machine so it can trap Mario and Sonic, but it accidentally traps them all and they all get sucked into the 1964 Tokyo Olympics. And yeah, the story mode isn't anything special, but it is a cute little story if that's what you're into. Thankfully, in this game, there's quite a lot of mini games, like soccer, running, fencing, so many. And some sports I didn't even know were in the Olympics, like skating and surfing. Each one of these games is short and sweet, but are a little confusing to get the hang of right away. Most games are short, but in depth enough that you have to play them a few times to actually understand what you're doing and how to do it right. Swimming is an easy one. You flip the sticks back and forth and that's it. And hope you don't go beside Metal Sonic because you know, you're in the water and it's Metal Sonic. Or boxing, the only game I can watch a giant turtle father punch its little turtle son, clean it in the ribs and neck. And of course, there's the third installment of Mario Strikers in this game, soccer. And it's definitely the best sport in this game hands down, and it's the most intense. But Mario and Sonic at the Olympics is the only game you can use all the loved characters do gymnastics, like Seth Rogen's Donkey Kong. There's also Dream Events. These are just bigger and better versions of other games, like Dream Racing. It's a faster version of skateboarding with levels versing other players. It's also the closest thing we're getting to a new Sonic Riders game. There's also Dream Boxing, and this game is a dumbed down version of the Turf Wars, where you try and get most spaces with your logo. And I don't know, I think it's just kind of weird seeing Knuckles at the Mushroom Kingdom beside the Odyssey. There's also retro styles of games. 
and they sort of seem like actual old school sporting games. Mario and Sonic as a whole is a great concept, or at least it was when they first tried it back on the Wii. But this game seriously lacks in replayability and creativity. I found myself constantly checking the timer to see how much longer these boring mini games were. Even everyone I was playing with thought each and every mini game was a little confusingly short. And it just wasn't that fun. And it's only something I'd play if I wanted to know what it's like to be in a waiting room at the ER. I get it's supposed to represent Tokyo and the Olympics, but I feel like it should have represented Mario and Sonic more with the Olympics themes. Anyways, let's move on from this Tokyo Olympic game to the next Tokyo Olympic game, which is also made by Sega, the official video game. Just by looking at the case, this game looks a lot more realistic. The main reason being there's no blue hedgehog on the box art. Oh, wait, Sonic is still in the game. Cannot escape the blue blur. This game already has more customization for the characters than Me Maker. So of course I made myself look identical to my body in real life. And then of course I put the Sonic costume on, naturally, as I do in real life as well. Swing is pretty much identical in the official game compared to Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games. You move the analog sticks and swim and push the buttons to push off the side of the pool. Then I remembered I was Sonic. And Sonic in the water means dead Sonic. But let's look at the games that aren't in the previous Olympics game. Like baseball. Yeah, it's not that good. Both me and my friend that I was playing with could not get the hang of it and we were striking out every single time. Then there's BMX. Okay, BMX was actually kind of fun. Spamming the B button and blazing through the tracks as fast as possible. And I have to say, seeing Sonic riding a bike is one of the funniest things in a game that I've seen in a long, long time. There's also basketball. And thankfully, this one isn't 36 gigabytes, but it's actually quite fun and gives you your basketball fill. But let's look at the other games that were on the previous game, like volleyball in this game. This one's a little better than the Mario and Sonic one because this one isn't 8-bit and I actually understand what's going on. Or there's soccer. In the official Olympics game, it does feel stale, but it doesn't feel as stale. Pretty much this Olympics game is a better version of Mario and Sonic in almost every way, except for a story mode and the dream events. And of course, the character roster, but that's a little bias. This game is for big boys, and this game is for little boys. So needless to say, the official Olympics game is far better than the Mario and Sonic Olympics game, or is just one of the best party pack games there is but still not as good as Nintendo Switch Sports due to the lack of polish and replayability and has superior gameplay compared to the confusing and boring controls of Mario and Sonic. So far, all of these sports games are special and have made me forget about Nintendo Switch Sports for about a day, but that's mainly because every game has little to no replayability, especially single player. But I get that these games aren't supposed to be for single player, it's just, there's even multiplayer, there's just little to no replayability. Anyway, so those are the value pack sports games that you may have heard of. And of course you got the Mario sports titles, but we're not looking at standalone sports. We're looking at value pack sports. And these are the number one sports that I could find that are actually worth maybe trying out if you're interested in them at all. And, and I think the costumes and unlockability in Nintendo Switch sports makes it worth playing. And especially the single player, the single player in Nintendo Switch sports is unlike any other sports game really that I've seen at least where you rank up your character and you rank up a certain sport and you can unlock customizations for that sport. If you like this video, uh, please let me know in the comments. And if you wanna see more videos, maybe games that might be best on Switch, you can click this playlist. And if you wanna subscribe, you can click right here. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, then like it. So hopefully I see you in the next one. See you later.